Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to one more game of round six of candidates tournament held in Yekaterinburg in Russia. And today I would like to show you this gentleman, so Anish Giri, a very interesting person because uh, he is half Nepalese, half Russian. He was born in Russia, raised in Japan, have Georgian wife and he lives in Neder Netherlands. So it's truly cosmopolitan combo and uh, he is 25 years old, uh, he is according to the FIDE ranking um, number 11 in the world, he's ranking 2763 and today he's gonna play as black. And Kirill Alexeyenko, uh, he got the wild card um, on this tournament from Russian Federation, he's ranking 2698, so he is the lowest rank player in this tournament and he is 22 years old and he play as white. So without further ado, let's jump into the game. So Alexeyenko open with e4, Giri answer with e5. We have knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4 and bishop c5. Juoko piano on the board and this is one of the most important um, openings in the chess history. It's known at least for 400 years so uh, definitely everybody should know that. Uh, we have castle, knight f6, d3, d6 and now c3. Uh, castle by black and here the most popular move is uh, just uh, bishop on b3, knight b on d2 uh, or sometimes h3 but here we have rook on e1. Uh, it's still very often played but not as popular as the moves I showed before and here also black have the couple of options so for example h6 or h6. Uh, very important moves because uh, h6 take away the the square for the for the bishop so this bishop would have the quite hard time uh, to develop an a6 uh, also it's pretty positional if first it can uh, the, the bishop can move there but also in some variation the queen can go there and and you know attack the the f2 uh, but uh, Giri play a5, so another variation, we have knight b on d2, we have bishop on e6, challenging this bishop, of course uh, white don't want to exchange. This is actually the most important for white bishop because it's pointing on f7, so this is the game where, you know, the, the bishop's actually pointing on f2, f7 and that's uh, all about uh, these points uh, in this opening. Uh, so bishop on b5 uh, and here a normal development like I show you uh, it's this one uh, and for white it would be uh, maybe something like this and jumping the, the knight so it could look for example like that queen b8 knight f1 and now queen a7 uh, and white actually could could just you know challenge this bishop this bishop don't have the, the possibility of moving so better to just exchange and now knight on e7 controlling f5, so this uh, knight can't jump so easily to, to f5 and, and the game could continue, you know, from that point. However, we have bishop on a7 uh, by Giri. It's not really popular move, it was played a couple of times uh, last year, um, but not on the top level. So, a uh, very interesting approach by Giri. We can say that this opening, this variation is still under development. Uh, we have here knight on f1 as planned and knight on e7. So now this bishop, uh, you know, shooting nowhere. Uh, we have knight on g3 and here c6, kicking the bishop, bishop a4 and knight on g6. h3, uh, taking away the spot for the, for the bishop, so bishop can't pin the, the knight anymore. And now it's interesting with the different moves order, we have this position actually played in 2019 between grandmasters. So Nils Grandelius from uh, Sweden play against uh, Robert Hofhanisian from Armenia. Uh, and Hofhanisian won that as black. So uh, in this game, 
they play d5 and Giri play the same variation and now we have move 13 so until a move at least let me say 21 uh, the moves are the same in this game from 2019 and this game so it's pretty interesting we have e takes on d5 knight takes on d5 bishop on c2 and now queen on c7 d4 by white e takes on d4 knight takes on d4 and now rook a on e8 by black and bishop on g5 so bishop have to develop somewhere uh, this is why sometimes h6 is a very good move because uh, dark square bishop actually have don't have a uh, good squares you know to develop so it's um, always problem with that uh, and here black play knight d on f4 a pretty active move a queen on d2 so now a bishop and the queen looking at this knight of course now is defended twice but if the knight moves or, or queen moves so black have to be very very careful we have bishop on d5 creating some threats uh, but uh, white actually exchanged the rooks and play rook on e8 so uh, black actually don't have much time for that and in the game I mentioned uh, the move was played rook on e1 with check queen e1 and knight on e6 so queen actually can't go to e8 with check so um, that's the point here and knight on e6 is possible also king on f8 is quite possible because queen also can't go to e8 and also h6 can be played kicking this bishop actually the bishop can't be kicked uh, this is the problem so white would have to uh, give give up the the bishop pair and and continue the game so that's the ideas here in this uh, variation however Giri plays something new uh, uh, and it was not played uh, you know on the top level or even you know between international masters at least according to my database uh, this move rook on e5 it was not played uh, and of course bishop is under attack so uh, white have to do something so we have bishop on f4 uh, now that's the the pin but of course it doesn't work because now we have rook on e1 with check queen on e1 and now queen on f4 and now queen on e8 so now this is the difference uh, between uh, other variation which were played before uh, because now the queen is on e8 so uh, of course black have to do something about that knight on f8 uh, and here white have to decide what to do uh, they can try for example take this pawn and try to win the knight yes it's possible the problem is uh, also this knight can be under attack so after bishop on d4 c takes on d4 queen on d4 actually black stands slightly better and um, white gonna have the weaknesses here and the problems in in continuing the game and white also have another option here maybe even more interesting knight g on f5 this is quite interesting so uh this is coming and for example after g6 this is possible but also knight on e7 king g7 and knight don't take the bishop it's possible of course it's, it's okay but this is interesting and now g takes on f5 knight takes on f5 and king on g8 and that would be threefold repetition if king moves somewhere for example here we have move like this with the check uh, and if the king moves to f6 actually is losing uh, queen come to e7 and there is sequence uh, losing sequence so that would be uh, probably draw if if Alexeyenko would like to draw however he play bishop on b3 asking to um, exchange these bishops these bishops are are quite powerful here so white want to um, definitely exchange it uh, and here uh, Giri said okay I'm gonna exchange it but let's do it this way so we have b takes on c4 c takes on d4 and now bishop b3 a takes on b3 and what do we have here so uh white actually have this mess with the pawn structure not easy uh, to play so black definitely achieves something uh, and also black can't take this d4 that would be actually losing because knight f5 
uh, with the check thread and, and checkmate thread and it's, you know, nothing can be done. Queen d1, king h2 and now uh, the, another check is, is not possible. So uh, queen d7, but actually doesn't work because knight on e7 anyway. And if king moves, then it's checkmate. So black would have to, uh, you know, sacrifice the queen and lose the game. Uh, this is why Giri play queen on f6. And now we have queen on e4. Uh, now g6, so creating some space for, for the king, but also a knight can't jump easily here. So knight on e2, finding another way. We have knight on e6 and now h4, preparing uh, some moves like h5. Uh, but now h5 by Giri and g3. So both players uh, created this uh, pawn structure uh, because queen and the knight can be very annoying in attack against the king so uh, better to be prepared uh, and here we have queen on d8 so uh, the idea is to move the queen to b6 and now attack d4 but also attack b3 and white can defend both so that's the idea here and now white play queen on e5 and this is the the best place a queen ever the, this queen watch everything is you know a monster queen and now black actually should worry about this so for example play something like queen c7 this is the option so challenge the queen uh, if exchange this is quite good for black because now uh, that's gonna be easy target for the knight so uh, that's the one option and if queen on e4 then queen on d6 so pushing the queen uh, and then it's still the option you know to to attack um, both targets so that could be probably uh, slightly better. However, we have queen on b6 by Anish Giri. And here it's impossible to, you know, defend both. But Alexeyenko actually did that. So uh, we have d5 attacking the knight. Something has to be done about that. So c takes on d5. Queen takes on d5. And queen actually defending. Uh, quite awesome. We have king on f8 and knight on c3. So knight is coming uh, to e4. Uh, we have queen on c7 preventing it or, uh, or at least uh, Anish Giri would like to prevent it. But now we have knight on e4 anyway. So Alexeyenko has sacrificed this pawn uh, for the initiative. So uh, if actually Anish Giri gonna take it, then white gonna show what they gonna play. And it's very common in the uh, queen uh, endings that one side sacrifice something and another side uh, gonna show gonna dictate what what's gonna happen on the board so we have queen on c1 by giri king g2 uh, queen on b2 and now white of course can play just just pick up the the pawn on a5 can pick up the pawn on b7 it's all good with this move and that's gonna equalize the game but alexeyenko tried to do uh, something more complicated so he play queen on d7 now uh, this is the idea thread the checkmate and also uh, thread to take the b7 pawn uh, and giri said okay but i have time for that so i play b6 and after knight on d6 he played queen on f6 defending this pawn uh, so black pieces now in defensive and white have you know initiative and can uh, pick up the pawns on the on the queen side that's the idea and here white goes for queen on e8, kicking the king first. Uh, and now queen on d7, and we have the threat, very serious threat, that would be a fork. Uh, so king on g8 is forced, uh, and now queen on e8 again, but now knight f8. Uh, and here we have queen on c6, so uh, white gonna pick up the pawns here now. Uh, but uh, Giri don't agree with that, he play queen on d8. Uh, defending and now a knight on c4 uh, interesting line for white uh, but it's still just a draw knight on b7 uh, queen on d4 defending because queen was under attack and and this is the only square uh, where black actually can defend uh, b6 so uh, queen on d4 and now knight on d6 
uh, queen on b4 and now queen d5 this is a checkmate threat very serious so knight on e6 now queen a8 with check king g7 and now knight e8 with check and uh, that would be just threefold repetition and if black try something like uh, king on h6 doesn't work because knight d6 uh, and this is a checkmate here threat so uh, black still have to go back uh, knight d8 and th that would be the draw so ju just interesting line in this uh, very complicated uh, position uh, but white just want to win the pawn so knight on c4 we have knight on e6 and knight on b6 uh, here if queen on b6 that is very very deadly and actually losing because queen d5 with check king g1 and now a4 and the pawn can't be taken because of the of the knight on c4 so a very very unpleasant position queen on b4 for example and then queen d1 with check and picking up this pawn and for example king g2 queen b3 and now uh white actually don't have the option to defend this knight uh because this is the only square controlled by the knight so that would be impossible so queen b3 a takes on b3 and, and black of course is uh, easily winning here so a knight on b6 like i said and now a knight on d4 by black attacking the queen and attacking also the pawn on b3 so uh interesting uh, position and now queen c5 that's the actually only move because queen has to still uh keep an eye on on the knight because if, if knight is lost then the game is lost so a knight on b3 taking the pawn temporarily and now queen on b5 defending and the knight and also attacking um the knight here knight on d2 and only now queen on a5 and here is the problem queen on d3 so as i said white got the initiative got some material back but now black have uh, initiative so everything is about you know placing the pieces in the right squares and now what is the problem here queen actually attacks f1 and also uh, f3 and both can't be defended uh, because queen of course can't go there that that would be impossible so uh, at least two moves and white are in big troubles now so queen on d5 of course is impossible if black exchange that would be cool the problem is queen on f1 with check king h2 and now queen f2 uh, queen can go to g2 but then knight f1 with check king h1 knight g3 exchange the queens and of course with two extra pawns it's easy win for black so uh not easy position if white try something like king on h2 uh, it's possible but queen on e2 and and it and it's also it's similar similar position so uh if the king comes closer then we would have the same the same option here of course uh, winning for black and if queen on c5 defending then actually knight e4 attacking the queen attacking um, f3 so queen have to be moved and now winning the pawn and uh, that was the option so alexienko didn't want to lose the pawn of course this way or another so he played queen on a1 this is what he found uh, and now he covers actually f1 but now feel free to pause the video and uh, find the moves which still win uh, the pawn for black while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so first move is not really um difficult because of course queen on e4 with check and now uh if king on h2 uh, then knight on f3 king h3 now uh, queen g4 and after king on g2 winning the pawn this way so that was possible uh this is why alexienko play king on g1 uh, but now knight on f3 king f1 and here is the move uh, we have to see uh, knight on h4 
uh, and the threat is very serious this is the threat very nice skewer and winning the queen so uh white have to do something about that um, this was played in the game uh, so uh queen on a8 with check and now uh black have to accept that so uh, queen a8 knight on e8 and now knight on f3 and we have this um, end game where black have one extra pawn and that's probably um, a draw however of course the players play that so we have king on g2 and knight on e5 and now f4 kicking the the knight even further knight on g4 so knight go back uh, knight on b6 alexeyenko also want to uh, bring the knight to the game we have king on f8 knight d5 with tempo because uh, controlling e7 so uh, black have to do something king e8 knight on c3 a uh, king on e7 and now knight on e4 uh, we have knight on e3 with check king f3 and now knight on c4 uh, knight on g5 and now king f6 knight e4 with check king f5 and now knight f2 uh, we have knight on d2 king on e3 and now knight f1 attacking the king and, uh, and attacking also g3 uh, so the knight asking the king okay where are you going buddy so uh, king have to go back king f3 we have knight on h2 king g2 and knight g4 so all these maneuvers uh, just to get to that position and uh, of course knight can't be taken because uh, h takes on g4 and after king on f2 king e4 king e2 opposition and the easiest way for black would be just f6 and uh, white have to play something uh, so king f2 king d3 <laughs> king g2 uh, king e2 now king g1 and of course uh, this is all the theory how to how to win in that position so uh, definitely exchanging the knights is impossible this is why alexeyenko play knight h3 with the plan of jumping to g5 but we have f6 so it's not possible anymore uh, king f3 now king e6 uh, and now king e4 so uh, white king is very very active uh, but white have to uh, be careful because you know they have only two pawns uh, we have king on d6 so black try to get this way we have knight on g1 king c5 and now king on d3 so blocking uh, blocking the the black king we have knight on h6 now uh, threatening to to take the pawn on g3 so king have to go back king e3 knight f5 and king back to f3 so that's the problem this this pawn is a problem so a uh, king can't be very very active uh, we have king on c4 knight on h3 now knight on d4 with check uh, king on e3 and now knight f5 uh, so again king f3 and now king on d4 so king is closer and closer to that position and white gonna be just squeezed here and knight on f2 knight on d6 now uh, and here what white could play could try at least to play something different uh, because they're gonna be squeezed uh, so they could try maybe this uh, this strategy to bring the knight uh, just behind the black position and uh, so for example knight on d1 knight on e4 knight b2 uh, knight c3 blocking the the knight but the problem is the knight would be engaged here so uh white would be pretty okay here on the on the king side uh so king on g2 just waiting g5 is possible fg5 fg5 uh king f3 uh, and now knight on b1 king g2 and and that would be the position if black want to do something like you know king on e3 now is time to to jump so knight c4 uh king e4 knight d6 king e5 uh, and white can operate actually from behind which maybe maybe would be easier uh, however uh, alexeyenko just prefer to to stay here so we have knight on h3 
uh, knight on e4 and now knight on g1 uh, king on d3 so king is closer and closer king on g2 and now knight on d2 so less and less space uh, for white uh, we have king on f2 and now king e4 knight e2 and now knight on b1 knight on g1 and giri here play h4 so he uh, want to change something and he play h4 uh, it's not winning move but white have to be very careful because g takes on h4 losing the game after king on f4 knight f3 defending actually king g4 and this knight is stuck on f3 can't be moved uh, so king on g2 and now uh, what black have to do knight c3 jumped here so for example uh, this way or this way uh, win this pawn and win the game so that would be the plan uh, so definitely this is impossible so first knight on h3 by Alexeyenko and now king f5 and only now g takes on h4 and after king on g4 it, it looks like Alexeyenko is losing but he calculated everything very very precisely and he played f5 very very sneaky idea if king takes on f5 it gives nothing because king on g3 knight c3 uh, knight f4 knight e4 with check king f3 and and black cannot do anything here and if white managed to to exchange one of the pawns and then and then it's uh, it's just a draw so uh, here uh, Giri have to play something special and he found move G takes on F5 uh, it's still not winning but uh, there are a lot of sneaky lines here so uh, we have King on E3 and now this is very sneaky uh, from Alexeyenko side because now if King takes on uh, H3 then look at this h5 king g3 who's gonna be faster h6 f4 with check king on d4 and now f3 h7 f2 uh, and now both sides promoting and it looks like black are winning but actually not queen g7 with check and if the king goes uh, somewhere here white just pick up the pawn uh, and uh, exchange the queens and that's a, of course a draw so king h4 queen h6 king g4 queen g6 and black cannot do anything here so that would be a draw uh, and if the the pawn is taken then here is the problem king f4 and just picking up and and winning so for example knight on c3 king f5 knight d5 and now knight f4 and now black has to do something so if move then of course that that would be a draw and if take then it's also a draw so not an option so in this simple position still a lot of poison so uh, anish giri play knight on c3 bringing the the knight uh, and here we have knight on f2 with check king on g3 and here is the most important moment in the game because it's still a draw it's still a draw but white have to find the way how to draw the problem is uh, it's move 88 so both players definitely are exhausted they they play a lot of good moves already uh, and uh, both players have like one minute on the clock so uh, they have incrementation 30 seconds but it's still you know they have to be very very precise the easiest way um, to draw actually is knight on h1 with check and if the king is moved somewhere not protecting uh, f4 we know what's gonna happen this gonna happen so white would just easily draw and if king on g4 just continue with the with the check so uh, this would be a draw and other option to draw is h5 uh, slightly more complicated because have to calculate a lot knight on d5 with check now king on d4 knight on e7 h6 and black can pick up the the knight and it looks like black gonna be fine here 
Uh, but after h7, knight on g6, now king on d5, king on e3, <laughs> king e6, it still looks very good for black, isn't it? So f4, king f6, knight h8, knight have to be moved of course, uh, king g7, and now f3, king h8, and now both sides just promote the queen at the same moment and that would be a draw however in this position uh kirill alexeyenko blundered the game he played knight on d3 and in this moment uh, anish giri uh, in the interview said in the end i almost had a heart attack as i realized it was going to be my first ever win at the the candidates i think i have never had such a high heartbeat after this game today i think we need a good doctor check uh, and this is very nice uh, picture of anish giri almost uh, getting the heart attack uh, okay uh, so uh, he actually found the best move and it's uh, not much to find knight on d5 with check we have king on d4 and knight on f4 so offering to exchange uh, the knights but that would be of course losing because king f4 now king d5 king g4 and of course uh, after king e6 don't go for this pawn that would be a draw f4 first and only then it's winning for black okay so uh knight on c5 was played and now king on h4 so this is the position two pawns and the knight against the knight uh what now we have king on e3 so going in the front of the pawns but then a king on g3 so uh, creating the safe passage for the pawns uh, white tried to do something knight on b3 we have knight on e6 knight on d2 creating some barrier on f3 uh, but f4 anyway uh, king e2 so now it's um, impossible to pass but knight g5 and now everything is fine King f1 by Alexeyenko, f3, uh, king g1, f2, king f1, and now f5. And in this position, Kirill Alexeyenko resigned the game. 98 moves, pretty exhausting game. And why he resigned? Because if king moved to e2, then uh, king g2, and then, uh, you know, uh, promoting to the queen and winning the game. Uh, and if moving the, the knight, for example, uh, knight on c4, then knight e4 and then the knight can go back. So have to play something else like king on e2. Uh, that could be quite sneaky because now if the king go to uh, g2, then there is some, uh, some fork here. Uh, however, um, f4 is, you know, protecting the e3 and that would be enough to win. So, for example, uh, king on f1 and now f3. And this is pretty cool idea because white actually don't have any moves. It's Suxfang, so uh, knight on b2 and that would be very beautiful checkmate. Uh, okay, so that's what would happen. However, in this position... Kirill Alexeyenko resign the game and as always I leave the link in the description to the study of this game so if you are interested in end game like this you know uh, go and study yourself and of course if you like this video press a like if for some reason you don't like this video press unlike leave the comment what do you think about Anish Giri getting almost heart attack congratulations to Anish he won first time in any FIDE candidates tournament so uh, that's very nice uh, achievement of course and if you don't want to miss any other games from this tournament and other tournaments press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one